over 90% of the energy in nuclear fuel rods is wasted. Yes, you heard that right. 90%. After a couple of years of use, we toss these fuel rods aside, where they sit, radioactive and unusable, for thousands of years. But wait, what if I told you that 96% of that nuclear waste could actually be recycled and used again? Yet, despite this, only a handful of countries are doing it. The rest of the world? Not so much. So why aren't we recycling nuclear waste? It's a story about science, politics, money, and of course, nuclear bombs. If there's so much energy left, why aren't we reusing it? Some countries actually are. One of the major players is France, a country that's made nuclear recycling its thing since the mid-1960s. France gets about two-thirds of its electricity from nuclear power. And guess what? They recycle their nuclear waste, 96% of it, to be precise. In a massive facility called La Hague, about five hours from Paris, France processes spent nuclear fuel from its reactors and even from other countries like the Netherlands, Australia, and Japan. They recycle it into something called MOX fuel, a mixture of uranium and plutonium, which can then be reused in their reactors. It's an operation so large that 10% of France's electricity is generated from this recycled MOX fuel alone. But France isn't the only country doing this. Although they're by far the leader, Russia, India, and Japan have dabbled in nuclear recycling, though on a much smaller scale. Now, here's a fun fact to think about. When France vitrifies its remaining waste, that's trapping the waste in glass, the space needed to store a year's worth of nuclear waste is just the size of a small warehouse. If they didn't recycle, they'd need five times more space. Now, if recycling nuclear waste seems like the obvious solution, why aren't more countries doing it? The answer is a little more complicated than you might think. One word, plutonium. It's a dangerous, highly radioactive element that's created during the recycling process. And let me tell you here, one gram of plutonium can generate as much energy as one metric ton of oil. That's massive, right? But this energy comes with a dark side. Plutonium can also be used to build nuclear bombs. In fact, one of the biggest reasons why countries like the U.S. don't recycle nuclear waste is the fear of nuclear proliferation. The more plutonium that gets produced, the greater the risk it could fall into the wrong hands. This isn't just paranoia, for your information. In the 1970s, India used plutonium from a civilian nuclear reactor to build its first nuclear weapon. Former U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission Chair Allison McFarlane explained it well. The U.S. indefinitely deferred reprocessing because they saw it as a grave threat in terms of nuclear weapons proliferation. That's why in 1977, under President Jimmy Carter, the U.S. halted its nuclear recycling efforts, a decision still affecting the country's policies today. Let's now talk about the U.S. in some detail. Well, with over 90 nuclear reactors currently operating, you'd think the U.S. would be leading the charge in nuclear recycling. But no, they aren't. Why? First off, economics. Recycling nuclear waste is expensive. Building a facility like La Hague costs billions of dollars, and maintaining it isn't cheap either. By comparison, uranium, the raw material for nuclear fuel, is still relatively abundant and cheap. As nuclear expert Paul Wilson from the University of Wisconsin-Madison says, the socioeconomic drivers just aren't there. In other words, as long as it's cheaper to mine fresh uranium, there's little incentive to recycle. And then there's the politics. The fear of nuclear weapons proliferation looms large in the minds of policymakers. Recycling nuclear fuel means creating more plutonium, something that most countries, particularly the U.S., are deeply uncomfortable with. Here's a trivia tidbit for you. The U.S. actually lifted the ban on nuclear recycling in 1981 under President Ronald Reagan. But despite this, the country never really invested in the technology. Why? Simple. Nobody wanted to touch plutonium. 
it's like playing with fire, and many experts argue that it's safer to just store the waste than to risk it falling into the wrong hands. All right, let's break down the cost issue a little more. The whole process of recycling nuclear waste involves complex technology, enormous security, and a lot of infrastructure. From transporting spent fuel in 110-ton casks to building facilities with 24,000 rooms, it's no small task. France can justify the cost because they've made nuclear energy a cornerstone of their national strategy. But for many other countries, it's just not worth it. The UK tried it for a while but gave up in recent years because the expense was too high. Japan, despite being a nuclear-dependent country, has been trying to build a recycling facility at Rakusho for over three decades, with endless delays and skyrocketing costs. And here's another trivia for you. One 2004 study found that reprocessing nuclear waste can be twice as expensive as simply storing it. That's a pretty big price tag. Now you might be thinking, but surely recycling is better for the environment, right? Well, yes and no. Recycling does reduce the amount of highly radioactive waste by about 80%, which is huge. But it doesn't eliminate waste entirely. In fact, the recycling process creates its own share of problems. For starters, the chemical processes used in recycling generate large amounts of secondary waste, and the equipment used in the recycling facilities eventually becomes contaminated and needs to be disposed of as radioactive waste too. Then there's the MOX, fuel itself. While it can be reused in reactors, it's not infinite. That is, after one cycle, the MOX fuel becomes spent and has to be discarded just like regular nuclear waste. As one 2019 article from the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists put it, recycling is expensive, dirty, and ultimately dangerous. It's a bit of a catch-22. Recycling does reduce waste in the short term, but still leaves us with long-term storage issues. So where does that leave us? Is there hope for a better, cheaper, safer way to recycle nuclear waste? There are some promising technologies on the horizon. One such method is pyroprocessing, a technique being developed at Argonne National Laboratory in the US pyroprocessing uses molten salt and high temperatures to separate out recyclable materials from spent fuel. The big advantage here is that it doesn't produce pure plutonium, making it less risky in terms of nuclear weapons proliferation. But, and this is a big but, pyroprocessing is still in the lab. We're probably decades away from seeing it deployed on a large scale, and we have no idea how much it will cost. Another approach is developing advanced nuclear reactors that can use spent fuel more efficiently. These reactors are designed to squeeze more energy out of the fuel, reducing the amount of waste produced. But like pyroprocessing, they're still mostly experimental and expensive to build. At the end of the day, nuclear waste is both a problem and an opportunity at the same time. We have the technology to recycle it and unlock a massive amount of untapped energy, but the cost, risk of proliferation, and sheer complexity of the process make it a tough sell for most countries. You see, Countries like France, Russia, and Japan have shown that it's possible, but for the rest of the world, it's still easier and cheaper to just store the waste and move on. Until the price of uranium skyrockets or new, safer technologies emerge, we're likely to see the majority of nuclear waste continue to pile up, untapped and unused. Well, there you have it. So what do you think? Should we be tapping into this untapped energy source, or are we better off playing it safe? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.